Welcome back. So first I'm going to offer my sincerest apologies for the long hiatus on this channel. Unfortunately moving back from China to England leads to a lot of time consuming activities that eliminated most of my free time that was put forward into these videos. Secondly, I'd like to apologise for the quality of the mic in this video. I sent most of my recording things along with my other precious items in shipping, and so it means that I'm going to have to use another kind of microphone to record this video. But I thought it was more important to get the content out than worry about the microphone quality, if I'm honest. This video will be taken from an article on my substack, which I'll link in the description below. Usually I'll release either transcripts or the same theme article on Substack just because it's easier for me to type down my thoughts in day-to-day -day life rather than constantly record little videos and then get f either forget about them or my concepts might change somewhat. So this video is going to be about the COVID lockdowns and its difference in China and in England. Two societies that I'm well informed on or at least i think I'm well informed on. Now as we might know, I have quite extensive experience of what the lockdown was like in China because I was already living in China when Covid hit. I saw the kind of response that the Chinese government took both in the early stage and at the peak of the infection rate in China and I'm going to use this video to comment and contrast on both the Chinese way that they did things and my experiences of England once I've returned and using some anecdotal evidence from my friends and their experiences of living under the English lockdown. The main comparison between these two is going to be the dictator, what the UK and most of the West would claim is a tyrannical dictatorship in China versus the kind of the way that the liberal democracies chose to try and deal with this virus because the way that they the way that they dealt with the virus obviously the west was influenced by the chinese way of dealing with it but they also tried to take their own tract and there were successes that i'm not going to comment on further in this video such as in the scandinavian nations which i always consider an outlier because they possess a very small population they don't possess realistic levels of population that the larger countries in the West could ever operate on. And compared to the size of the US and China, these countries are barely even the backyard of these nations. One of the points I want to address is that foreigners would definitely have suffered under the Chinese COVID restrictions far differently from the native Chinese population. That's mostly going to be because we would consume different media. We'll definitely not be involved in Chinese news so much, especially that in my experience most Ch most um, foreign foreigners who live and work in China don't have a fluency level of Chinese where they would be interested in watching the Chinese news anyway. Also, foreigners would never experience the kind of restrictions that the Chinese inflicted on their own population because most of the Chinese, um, most of the people involved in enforcing that um, kind of black uniform police officers and even the blue uniform police officers as well as business owners and security guards they're not going to want to approach a foreigner because they'll be terrified of speaking English to them and with the fluency level of Chinese among um, among foreign foreigners living in China being pretty low they always they're always anxious about approaching foreigners so Enforcing COVID level COVID restrictions person to person, it's always going to be different for a foreigner. But I'm going to talk about the perspective as an observer and as somebody who lived there. Now, one of the things that I'll probably get into in a later video is that when I first moved to China, the daily freedoms of myself compared to my daily freedoms in England were of a, were I felt higher in China. To be honest, um, most people in China will overtly break their own laws pretty much on a daily basis and ignore anyone trying to enforce them unless it's going to result in pretty serious punishment. For example, ignoring basic traffic laws, running red lights, 
uh, riding an electric bike without a helmet, which became an enforceable and finable offence in early 2020. Littering happened quite commonly, and small children who were often often encouraged by their their elders peed in the street and defecated in the street on quite a regular basis and so the way that the law enforced in china is far different to what people would think outside of china because let's be honest the media and political portrayal and even in public education in england the, the portrayal of the Chinese dictatorship is going to be something that micromanages the daily lives of its citizens. But when we're talking about populations of 1.4 billion, and the army, even though it's the largest in the world, is only 1 million strong, they're never going to be able to enforce the laws the way they'd like. The reason I'm, gonna, I'm trying to tell you this is because the outside view of Chinese society is very different to actual life on the ground, and many of the youngest and oldest generations in China will just flout most strict laws anyway, and most of the conformity in China belongs to the middle generation, the kind of people who will wage slaves, work, or work for a company, in the, in the late 20s to early 40s. Now, when COVID first broke out in Wuhan, the Chinese were pretty much oblivious that this was going to be a, a, a global pandemic unleashed from their doorstep. The The Spring Festival in, in the same year as the Wuhan infection went ahead without any government restrictions, which is unusual because one of the first things that they did afterwards was to control population movements. And they, didn't, they, never, they never fully told people that they weren't allowed to leave. But they did tell people, they, they informed the population that, they were, that it would be preferable if they stayed at home rather than going out. And this is obviously a problem the Spring Festival is a huge problem for the Chinese government because it's the one holiday a year where the Chinese just go everywhere. Either they'll return to their hometown, which tends to be hundreds if not thousands of uh, kilometers away from the city of residence or the town of residence. And also, they, w they take the opportunity of what is their longest holiday to go abroad. So they'll use this opportunity to visit foreign countries, which then led to huge amounts of foreign infections. Just to show you the levels of infect the level of care that the Chinese had during that spring festival, me and my fiance around the time of the Wuhan crisis were allowed to go on a holiday to Thailand, pretty much unrestricted, and flew to flew to Thailand with almost no mask or infection restrictions it was only when we returned like two weeks later that we started to notice that there was medical checkpoints and the airport was basically deserted because the chinese government had stopped flights flights going out anyway not flights returning of course there's always that unusual part of the chinese covid um <clears throat> the covid response that the Chinese basically maxed out at around 80,000 infection cases and then flatlined. So there was no peaks or troughs of the Chinese, um, the Chinese infection rate. It went up to 80,000 and then flatlined, which if you ever saw a graph of it, you would think was pretty unusual. Even with that kind of strict response though, even with the being challenged at every part, every time uh, we came into a public building for uh, our COVID records and the new restrictions being placed on people's movements. It was far from a totalitarian imprisonment. You were still allowed to go to local shops. Items were pretty easy to come by with little noticeable change. And delivery drivers were still av freely available. Life in China is, is on a convenience level that most English people wouldn't even realise, where um, you could order something from a shop and have it delivered to you within the hour and within even 30 minutes if it's in close proximity because there's such a herd of a huge herd of uh, motorbike bound delivery drivers that just do uh, on the cuff deliveries when and where there was no shortage in china even though china's food situation is probably if it was left to have to fend for itself it would have a hard time feeding its own huge population there were there were almost no shortages of goods in china the the restaurants began to open up even after a, 
after a month of solid lockdown, the restaurants began to open up again and full travel re around that point. Though there was an expectation of some restrictions of travel. This meant that if you ever wanted to go anywhere, there was an application system through WeChat or Alipay that kept a track of where you've been, including the cities that you've been in and the provinces that you've been in, so that the Chinese um, state and federal authorities could take um, note of the infection rate and how it could spread and obviously isolate it to one area. The main part of the COVID restrictions that continued throughout the throughout my time there was the mask wearing. But this was never a new thing for Chinese life anyway. Most if you ever visited an Asian society, especially a Far East Asian society like Japan, Korea or China, mask wearing is fairly common because they have this culture in these places where if you're infected by a cold or a flu, that it's your responsibility to protect yourself and others. So they would wear a medical mask to prevent the spread of something like a cough or if they felt sick, they would wear a mask. There was also fairly common for people to wear masks for pollution. In places like Beijing and Shanghai, the AQI can get over 150 on a very regular basis. The mask wearing was simply to protect themselves against the, the negative effects of the pollution. The thing is that the COVID mask wearing wasn't very well enforced after the first few after the first few months of the serious lockdown. Most people were flaunting that law as well. Um, even the security guards that were there to tell you, oh, you should put a mask on before you came into this establishment, were not going to chase you around it. And so most people would put on the mask, walk into the, walk into the establishment that were the, they were visiting, and then take it off again. When the classrooms reopened in the summer of 2020, there was some expectation that teachers and staff and students would wear a mask while they were teaching. But that began to relax again, because... After a few months of mandatory mask wearing, people got tired of wearing them, and people got tired of constantly enforcing it. So those waned too. Bear in mind that this didn't up the infection rate in China, at least reportedly that it had no serious effect on the COVID spread. The weirdest thing about this whole event in that returning to England is that COVID had been a long distant memory for the Chinese since the summer of 2020. Whereas when I returned to England in, in August of 2021, the COVID restrictions are still here. People are still concerned about COVID. They still wear masks when they're going into an establishment. They're still expected to sanitise at every, uh, every corner. So when you leave a culture or a nation that's already done COVID restrictions successfully to the point where they could begin to ignore them again, England was a, was a wake-up call. When we compare the approaches between the Chinese government and the English government, the thing is that regardless of what people um, would immediately presume, the restrictions on your day-to-day -day life are actually much higher in England than they are in China. And the way that COVID was approached was much more heavily restricted compared with China. I know that people saw those infamous pictures of army officers in China barricading people in their own rooms. And that is a serious breach of their, their living freedoms. But they didn't do this to many cases. And they only did this to people who were known to be infected with the virus and could cause serious infection. The problem with England, obviously, was that they took no precautions in the early stages of the virus when it was spreading around China England was laissez-faire with it they made no attempt to restrict flights which as I told you with China after the spring holiday all inbound flights were restricted and heavily checked and that really it was only Chinese citizens that were allowed to return or people with a, a new a um, pre-existing visa so new visas were not were not given and nor were new people allowed into the country. In England, people could just come in and go as they please. The situation wasn't really beginning to be controlled until at least a year after the initial infections in Wuhan. The problem from the government is they offered a very schizophrenic response to this. They, the, the Prime Minister first said that they wouldn't lock down and then immediately said that they would have to and turned tail again. This kind of schizophrenic response doesn't exactly bring faith from the population. 
And many people seem to believe that this kind of lockdown craze was only brought about because of media scare fueling public outrage. The problem with all this is it's that the COVID restrictions have seriously damaged the fabric of English society, and I don't know if it will recover, but the traditional manners that we'd expect from Englishmen, the politeness and the dignity with which they treat other people, has been replaced with this facile need to social distance. They, if you walk out in public, people walk around you at a weird distance, as if you have leprosy or you smell or something. The way that people are treated is with a, a, a serious suspicion. The average person is treated as if they hold the key to death within their hands and must be avoided at all costs. The, the chi Chinese never fully enforced social distancing, so there was never this weird everybody walks at a meter apart, mostly because the Chinese government came to the conclusion that that was never going to be enforceable with such high population densities in their cities. But in England, people were basically beaten into line by social pressure to stand unnaturally far apart. They now talk to people through fibre or plastic fibres, and they've brought about this total plastification of their own society, where everyone's wrapped in these artificial coverings and protected in an effort to stop the virus, which, bearing in mind in the UK, had a survival rate of close to 99.999994%. Unless you had some serious comorbidities, you weren't particular. the mortality rate for this was particularly low. Years of the supposed rejection of plastics, which is something that I have noticed on my return, that England has made this effort to do away with plastics. Irrespective of my disagreements as to the nature of the climate, the climate emergency and global warming, the, the, the bringing in of recyclable and far more natural materials is something that you, I would encourage. I think it, it leads to a more healthy society if people use recyclable materials. But the English society has, on, on the one hand, been terrified of the climate crisis and so done away with plastic and brought about the use of more recyclable materials. On the other hand, has brought in the total plastification of its people. So you can go into shops now and there's big plastic panels that somebody has to talk to you behind in a risk to get the virus. They have to wear plastic visors, which have been rejected by medical professionals as not protecting you from the virus anyway. The English have basically been browbeaten by public pressure into mass cuckoldry and scared into their own homes by the government and the media. And they've suffered this for almost six times as long as their Chinese counterparts, irrespective of the fact that China was both the centre of the pandemic and has a much higher population density in its cities, somewhere that would be rife for a virus to spread. And yet the English have proved their inability to even silently rebel against this. That kind of Christian dignity of lambasting laws without any violence, and a comic re disregard for petty tyranny, but they've been scared into their own homes by the managerial elite, by a virus that isn't that much of a threat to their health, Perhaps I'll go this into this more in another video, as this one already seems to be getting seriously long. But hopefully, in the coming months, there will be a far more there'll be far more content on the horizon, and I'll try and explain more of the differences of between Western and Chinese society, and go into the into depths about the Chinese and their way of life. Thank you very much for watching and listening. See you on the next one. God be with you, Sai Jim.